You fool! Warren is dead. Welcome to Horror Babble. This week we've got a brief tale of lycanthropy in store for you, by Robert E. Howard. One of Howard's earliest offerings, In the Forest of Vilfair, appeared in Weird Tales back in August 1925. We hope you enjoy it, folks. In the Forest of Vilfair by Robert E. Howard The sun had set. The great shadows came striding over the forest. In the weird twilight of a late summer day, I saw the path ahead glide on among the mighty trees and disappear, and I shuddered and glanced fearfully over my shoulder. Miles behind lay the nearest village, miles ahead the next. I looked to left and to right as I strode on, and anon I looked behind me, and anon I stopped short, grasping my rapier, as a breaking twig betokened the going of some small beast. Or was it a beast? But the path led on, and I followed, because, forsooth, I had naught else to do. As I went, I bethought me, my own thoughts will rout me, if I be not aware. What is there in this forest, except perhaps the creatures that roam it, deer and the like? Tash the foolish legends of those villagers! And so I went, and the twilight faded into dusk. Stars began to blink, and the leaves of the trees murmured in the faint breeze. And then I stopped short, my sword leaping to my hand, for just ahead, around a curve of the path, someone was singing. The words I could not distinguish, but the accent was strange, almost barbaric. I stepped behind a great tree, and the cold sweat beaded my forehead. Then the singer came in sight, a tall, thin man, vague in the twilight. I shrugged my shoulders, a man I did not fear. I sprang out, my point raised. Stand! He showed no surprise. I prithee handle thy blade with care, friend, he said. Somewhat ashamed, I lowered my sword. I am new to this forest, I quoth apologetically. I heard talk of bandits. I crave pardon. Where lies the road to Vilfair? Cobbler, you've missed it, he answered. You should have branched off to the right some distance back. I am going there myself. If you may abide my company, I will direct you. I hesitated. Yet why should I hesitate? Why, certainly. My name is de Montour of Normandy. And I am Carolus Lelou. No! I started back. He looked at me in astonishment. Pardon, said I. The name is strange. Does not Lou mean wolf? My family were always great hunters, he answered. He did not offer his hand. You will pardon my staring said I, as we walked down the path, but I can hardly see your face in the dusk. I sensed that he was laughing, though he made no sound. It is little to look upon, he answered. I stepped closer, and then leaped away, my hair bristling. A mask! I exclaimed. Why do you wear a mask, monsieur? It is a vow, he exclaimed. In fleeing a pack of hounds, I vowed that if I escaped— I would wear a mask for a certain time. Hounds, monsieur? Wolves, he answered quickly. I said wolves. We walked in silence for a while, and then my companion said, I am surprised that you walk these woods by night. Few people come these ways, even in the day. I am in haste to reach the border, I answered. A treaty has been signed with the English, and the Duke of Burgundy should know of it. The people at the village sought to dissuade me. They spoke of a wolf that was purported to roam these woods. Here the path branches to Vilfair, said he, and I saw a narrow, crooked path that I had not seen when I passed it before. It led in amid the darkness of the trees. I shuddered. You wish to return to the village? No, I exclaimed. No, no, 
Lead on. So narrow was the path that we walked single file, he leading. I looked well at him. He was taller, much taller than I, and thin, wiry. He was dressed in a costume that smacked of Spain. A long rapier swung at his hip. He walked with long, easy strides, noiselessly. Then he began to talk of travel and adventure. He spoke of many lands and seas he had seen, and many strange things. So we talked, and went farther and farther into the forest. I presumed that he was French, and yet he had a very strange accent that was neither French, nor Spanish, nor English, nor like any language I'd ever heard. Some words he slurred strangely, and some he could not pronounce at all. "'This path is often used, is it?' I asked. "'Not by many,' he answered, and laughed silently. I shuddered. It was very dark, and the leaves whispered together among the branches. "'A fiend haunts this forest,' I said. "'So the peasants say,' he answered. "'But I have roamed it often, and have never seen his face.' Then he began to speak of strange creatures of darkness, and the moon rose, and shadows glided among the trees. He looked up at the moon. Haste, said he, we must reach our destination before the moon reaches her zenith. We hurried along the trail. They say, said I, that a werewolf haunts these woodlands. It might be, said he, and we argued much upon the subject. The old women say, said he, that if a werewolf is slain while a wolf, then he is slain. But if he is slain as a man, then his half-soul will haunt his slayer forever. But haste thee, the moon nears her zenith. We came into a small moonlit glade, and the stranger stopped. Let us pause a while, said he. Nay, let us be gone, I urged. I like not this place. He laughed without sound. Why, said he, this is a fair glade, as good as a banquet hall it is, and many times have I feasted here. <laughs> Look ye, I will show you a dance. And he began bounding here and there, and on flinging back his head and laughing silently, thought I, the man is mad. As he danced his weird dance, I looked about me. The trail went not on, but stopped in the glade. Come, said I, we must go on. Do you not smell the rank, hairy scent that hovers about the glade? Wolves den here. Perhaps they are about us, and are gliding upon us even now. He dropped upon all fours, bounded higher than my head, and came toward me with a strange, slinking motion. That dance is called the Dance of the Wolf— said he, and my hair bristled. Keep off! I stepped back, and with a screech that set the echo shattering, he leaped for me, and though a sword hung at his belt, he did not draw it. My rapier was half out when he grasped my arm and flung me headlong. I dragged him with me, and we struck the ground together. Wrenching a hand free, I jerked off the mask. A shriek of horror broke from my lips— Beast eyes glittered beneath that mask, white fangs flashed in the moonlight. The face was that of a wolf. In an instant those fangs were at my throat. Taloned hands tore the sword from my grasp. I beat at that horrible face with my clenched fists, but his jaws were fastened on my shoulders, his talons tore at my throat. Then I was on my back. The world was fading. Blindly I struck out. My hand dropped then closed automatically about the hilt of my dagger, which I had been unable to get at. I drew and stabbed, a terrible, half-bestial, bellowing screech. Then I reeled to my feet, free. At my feet lay the werewolf. I stooped, raised the dagger, then paused, looked up. The moon hovered close to her zenith. If I slew the thing as a man— its frightful spirit would haunt me forever. I sat down, waiting. The thing watched me with flaming wolf eyes. The long, wiry limbs seemed to shrink, to crook. Hair seemed to grow upon them. Fearing madness, I snatched up the thing's own sword and hacked it to pieces. 
Then I flung the sword away and fled. If you enjoyed listening today, be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button below. After doing so, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive new content notifications. If you'd like to support our work and receive exclusive perks, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below. To support us in other ways, see the video description for links to our Bandcamp and Patreon pages, our merch store over at Teespring, and further information relating to our releases on Audible, iTunes, and Spotify. And until next time.